Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video in Oneness We Are Abe. So we are in April. We just closed off part seven of the Soul Origins and the Seven Rays of Light um, last week. And so this week we are going to open back up the four realms of Gaia and opening to magic. So it must have been about one month ago that we finished part one and part two of the four realms of Gaia and opening to magic. So if you want to get caught up, go ahead and watch part one and part two. Um, I'll put the links to those videos below. And in this video, we're just going to kick it right off and we're going to continue with the information that came through um, regarding the realms of Gaia, specifically the first four realms of Gaia and opening to this energy of magic. After I sat down to bring forward the information for this video, I realized how, of course, everything unfolds perfectly, everything happens for a reason, and what I mentioned in part two, at the end of part two, was that they won't continue to bring forward information until I posted the first two videos, and then what ended up happening was um, we kind of cut that off and went into uh, the rest of the parts of the soul origins and the seven rays of light, part four, part five, six, and seven. Um, and I realized how everything's connected because the information that came through in those videos is directly connected to the realms of Gaia, opening to magic. Um, and then, of course, the last couple of videos I brought forward was about the new moon energy and bringing in that divine feminine energy at this time with the new moon, with the 4-4 portal. And actually, that information directly ties into the information that came through in this video. Um, so, of course, everything's unfolding perfectly. Everything... The, all the information is coming through um, in perfect order and exactly how it's meant to be presented and meant to come through. So I'm going to get right into this video. Everything came through in writing first, um, but I'm going to go right into reading what came through. We, meaning Abe, Gaia, and the energetic realms that exist upon her, left off in the last video speaking about Avalon being the gateway to all the other realms. We cut off the flow of information in the last video because we wanted you to first understand the flow of Gaia in the universe and therefore understand the flow of the universe. What they're talking about is they wanted us to understand this, um, basically that universal energetic cycle that we talked about in part four, part five, six, and seven of the soul origins and the seven rays of light. They go on to say that in understanding how we are all connected, physical and non-physical, you can better understand the role of the energetic realms of Gaia. We are coming forward at this time to help assist in Gaia's ascension. We open with the energy of Divine Feminine, and now is a time for our leading roles in the play. So if you haven't yet watched my New Moon Energy Update video for April, go ahead and watch that video. We talk more about that Divine Feminine energy opening up strongly on the planet, again with that 4-4 portal, and the April New Moon, and how Divine Feminine will be coming in strong over this month of April, as well as the upcoming months. And what comes through in this transmission is that these energetic realms of Gaia are connected to the Divine Feminine energy, or they kind of ride that same wave. So they're able to open up onto the planet as this greater Divine Feminine energy also opens up onto the planet during this time. They go on to say that Avalon is making itself known to people of the physical earth plane because in Avalon holds many people's inner lost knowledge and opening into the realms. Meaning that in opening energy of Avalon onto the planet, it will help open soul memory and inner lost knowledge within many people on the planet. In this inner lost knowledge of many people is knowledge about Atlantis and open energy bodies of Gaia 
and non-physical realms that coexist upon Gaia. This information helps to open beyond the consciousness of the current collective. In other words, opening this energy onto the planet will help to open knowledge within the collective consciousness about how to move forward in your ascension. In your ascension process, you are on the leading edge, going where no one has gone before in your current state. Like we said in part seven of Soul Origins and the Seven Rays of Light, the overarching energy of your collective experience was planned out far in advance. Now, how you play out that energy in your ascension process, the specifics of it, is up to you as a collective. And many beings from all over the universe, including the beings from the open energetic realms of Gaia, are taking part in this grand play of Gaia's ascension and birth into 5D New Earth. A blueprint of how to work with ascending energy was offered by many masters and source souls who have previously incarnated on your planet. Think Jesus, ancient Egypt, gods and goddesses, etc. that we speak about in part 7 of Soul Origins and the Seven Rays of Light. They go on to say, But now is the time to put the blueprints and energy into action. Avalon's role in your ascension is not a small role, but will open great knowledge onto the planet. In Avalon is a living library of many people's lost knowledge. Avalon has been the keepers of many people's inner lost knowledge because what came through was home is where the heart is, meaning that many people find comfort and warmth and familiarity in Avalon and the energetic realms of Gaia. In many people's inner Akashic library was a locked door to one of the inner library aisles, if you will. With the opening of the divine feminine energy and energy of the realms of Gaia onto the planet comes the unlocking of that door for many people because the keepers of the knowledge are here with the key. The keepers of this knowledge meaning the realms of Gaia, which they said was the keepers of many people's inner lost knowledge. What came through was Presenting this information is opening the energy of the realms, as well as the energy of Divine Feminine, through Jessica and onto the planet. This is how it will work. The energy of the realms and Divine Feminine flow through you. Upon recognizing and remembering your knowledge through inner deep resonance, you are opening the door within for the energy of the higher vibrational realms of Gaia, as well as the greater divine feminine energy to open and flow through you, not only onto the planet, but into the collective consciousness. The knowledge and energy that each person brings through from their own resonance will be unique to their own perspective and experiences and knowledge found within their own inner Akashic library. You are literally bringing forward the energy within your own unique soul memory or inner Akashic library onto the planet and into the collective consciousness. This is why your unique viewpoint is so necessary. For those who do not hold knowledge of the realms in their own inner Akashic library, in their own inner soul memory, they may have the opportunity to access the greater Akashic library of the universe and pull information and knowledge about the realms from there. And this will open the greater perspective and energy onto the planet and into the collective consciousness. I asked next, okay, so where do we begin? And what came through was kind of a continuation of our last video in this Four Realms of Gaia series. So what came through was, Avalon opened its doors for lost Atlanteans following the fall of Atlantis and the lowering of the dimensions. Avalon, along with the other energetic realms of Gaia, exist in between dimensions, in between worlds, as some might say. In the lowering of the dimensions following the fall of Atlantis and Lemuria, the Atlanteans as well as the Lemurians and other civilizations that may have existed during that time 
began to weave in and out of the dimensions as they fell. And then I had a vision of an elevator going down. And so basically the in-between dimensions that they speak about where the realms of Gaia exist is kind of like the space in between floors. So as the Atlanteans and the Lemurians moved from the, the 12th floor to the 11th floor and so on and so forth, they had to move through the in-between dimensions, through the in-between of the floors. What came through is that moving in between dimensions is not as quick as an elevator ride. The Atlanteans, as well as other civilizations on Earth, but in speaking of Avalon, we are speaking specifically in connection with Atlantis at this time. The Atlanteans lingered in between dimensions as they made the elevator ride down. When you open up to the energy of this in-between dimensions, you open up to the entire world of the energy realms of Gaia. So think of the in-between dimensions place as a single realm where many different vibrational frequencies exist, much like your physical earth plane. So I asked, um, before they spoke about these 12 upper realms of Gaia as, as well as 12 lower realms of Gaia. Um, and so I asked, do they all exist together in this one single realm? And what came through is no, it depends on vibrational frequency. So the realms that exist close in frequency will coexist in the same space, such as the first four realms of Gaia. The higher the frequency gets, the farther the frequencies fall from each other. In other words, the next set of realms that coexist with each other are the fifth, sixth, and seventh realms. So the frequency of the first four realms are different from the frequency of the fifth, sixth, and seventh realms. So they cannot necessarily coexist with each other. Um, because they're, far, the, they're farther apart in frequency, if you will. They're different sets of realms. The fifth, sixth, and seventh realms open up into another layer, if you will, of the energetic bodies of Gaia. The first four realms of Gaia coexist closest to the energetic vibrational frequency of the physical Earth plane. This is why when you, on your physical earth plane, move in between dimensions at any time, you will open into a single realm or world which holds the first four realms of Gaia coexisting together. And these first four realms of Gaia, we're talking about the first four upper realms of Gaia. So in the movement between dimensions, Following the fall of Atlantis, the Atlanteans opened up into this sort of single realm or this single world and stayed a while. I asked all Atlanteans, and what came through was no, but a large portion of them. When the Atlanteans opened into Avalon, they did not know that they had opened into a realm of Gaia. It was a new land they had escaped to with the fall and flooding of their home, Atlantis. In their seafaring journey away from Atlantis, they opened into a portal that opened them into the realm of Gaia. And then I had a vision of the Bermuda Triangle, so it's possible that they moved through this sort of same energy of that Bermuda Triangle. And what came through was, yes, vortex energies around your Earth strongly open your physical dimension into the energetic realms of Gaia or into the, the energetic bodies of Gaia, which is where the realms exist. The Atlanteans passed through one of these portals and opened into the energetic realm of Gaia. I asked what happened next, and what came through was they reached the shores of what is now known as Ireland and England, a much bigger landmass at that time. The people of this realm existing in this landmass were the people of Avalon. I asked, what exactly is Avalon? And what came through is, Avalon is a land in the first realm of Gaia, the realm of fine things. 
The realm of fine things is the closest energetic body of Gaia to the physical earth plane. Blowing wind opens into all physical and non-physical realms on Gaia. The ocean opens into all physical and non-physical realms on Gaia. The land masses open into all physical and non-physical realms on Gaia. So in saying physical and non-physical realms, they're basically just talking about physical, meaning our physical reality here in our see it, touch it, taste it world, and the non-physical talking about the realms. What came through is Avalon exists in the same space as your physical Ireland and England, but in a realm not of your physical plane or sight. Avalon exists just beyond the veil of physical and non-physical on your Earth planet. The physical and the non-physical coexist together in the same space that is Gaia. Again, physical meaning our world, this reality, and the non-physical meaning the realm of Gaia that Avalon exists within. I asked, What do we need to know about the Atlanteans and Avalon? And what came through was, the Atlantean and Avalon connection is strong for opening the portal between the non-physical realms of Gaia and the physical Earth planet of Gaia. As we spoke about in the first two parts of this video series, The Four Realms of Gaia and Opening to Magic, at this time in the ascension, the energy of the higher vibrational realms are opening onto the planet through each and every one of you. As you remember who you truly are and your connection to the realms within your own inner Akashic library, you will open the energy of those realms onto the planet. I asked, why is it important to open the energy of the realms onto the planet or onto the physical plane? And what came through is, The energy of the realms opening onto the planet is part of the destined opening of the ascension. It is an ingredient in the soup, the grand soup made up of many strong ingredients. When the Atlanteans opened up into the land of Avalon, they brought with them the energy of the physical planet, meaning the lowering of energy and increased duality. Atlanteans brought a wave of strong duality and lower, dense energy with them into Avalon. This energy seeped through not only Avalon, but all the realms that Avalon was connected to, meaning the first four realms of Gaia that all exist or coexist in one single realm. And then that therefore then affects all the other layers of realms. So, as the physical planet began to lower in dimension, density, vibration, and energy, so did the energy bodies and realms of Gaia. Atlanteans opened duality into a space that had none. In other words, they opened what you would call evil into the fairy tales, and the poisoned apple of Snow White was created. When the Atlanteans first opened into the land of Avalon, Avalon was a peaceful land. Open energy of magic was all throughout the land. And then I had a vision of Merlin. And what came through was, yes, Merlin type of people existed all throughout the land of Avalon. People of Avalon fostered a magical relationship with Gaia. The first four realms of Gaia coexisted harmoniously together. Avalon was home to many within the first two realms of Gaia. So if we go back to part one of this video series, uh, I'll put the 12 upper realms and the 12 lower realms. In this video series, we're mainly talking about the 12 upper realms, which uh, represent the energetic bodies of Gaia. The 12 lower realms are manifested uh, in main part due to our, as a collective, uh, manifestation of energy within the planet or um, within the lower uh, density ener- or within the lower vibrational energies of Gaia. So going over again the first four realms of Gaia, the first realm is the realm that Avalon exists within and it is called the realm of fine things. 
Again, this is the energy body closest to Gaia. The second realm is the realm of magic. The third realm is the realm of mystery. The fourth realm is the realm of majesty. So although these are kind of like four different layers, they are four different vibrational frequencies. We call it four different realms, but in, I guess, the actual existence in the non-physical realms, it's like these four realms coexist together in one single greater realm um, because they are closer in vibrational frequency that they can that they can exist together. What came through is magic was well known and practiced in the land of Avalon. The people and Gaia coexisted together in peace, and Gaia offered the people all her secrets. Again, this is, they're talking about Avalon before or right when the Atlanteans opened up into the realm and into Avalon. The people of Avalon were interested in the physical earth plane. They knew about it because Gaia told them. The people of Avalon worked with magic to help the physical earth planet and people. They could help the physical planet in a way that non-physical energy and beings outside of the earth experience could not necessarily help. So basically what they're saying is that um, the beings that exist in the non-physical realms of Gaia, the energetic bodies of Gaia, um, here specifically they're talking about Avalon, they know about us here on the physical earth plane, our reality, um, because they have this deeper connection with Gaia, and Gaia told them all about this physical earth uh, planet or plane. What came through is that the people of the realms of Gaia may have been non-physical to the physical people of Earth, but they could still have a greater impact on the physical planet because they were coexisting with the physical people and the planet. So Avalon's energy, alchemy, and magic could have a direct, powerful, and strong effect on the physical planet, even if they were existing in a different frequency space. They were existing in the same space of Gaia, but in that non-physical energetic realm. So any energy alchemy practiced in the energetic realms of Gaia in Avalon could trickle down into the physical earth plane because we exist in the same space. One is just energetic and the other is physical at least in our perspective and awareness. What came through is that not before, but during the downfall of Lemuria and Atlantis, the people of Avalon were working hard to balance the energy of Gaia and prevent the downfall. But the downfall of Atlantis was destined and central to the overall existence of Gaia. And this is also when they made a correction um, at least to my, what I was bringing through, they're like, correction, not people of Avalon, but what came through was wizards of Avalon. Most of them were wizards helping to prevent the downfall of Atlantis and Lemuria from where they were in Avalon, from this non-physical energetic realm. Um, so they were trying to help prevent the downfall from where they were, um, as well as the open energy of Gaia was also trying to help. But according to them, the downfall of Atlantis and Lemuria was destined and central to the overall existence of Gaia, to Gaia's unfolding of her own journey. What came through is that the energetic realms of Gaia depend on the physical earth plane for existence. What happens on the physical earth plane affects the energetic realms. Think of your physical and energetic bodies. They coexist together and directly affect one another. Your energetic body affects your physical body and vice versa. Your energetic body plays a strong role in how your physical body manifests. Many of you are the incarnated souls of those very Merlin-type wizards of the realm of Avalon, 
those souls who helped to try to prevent the downfall of Lemuria and Atlantis. You bring forward knowledge of not only the mastery of energetic alchemy and magic, but the knowledge of receiving the Atlanteans into the realm and the shift of the realm from higher vibration into lower vibration, meaning that if you existed in the realm in Avalon at the time of the downfall of Lemuria and Atlantis, you not only hold knowledge um, and soul memory of the magic that was being practiced there, the mastery of energetic alchemy, but also you have the knowledge of being there when the Atlanteans came into the realm and brought, you know, that whole shift of energy in the realm as well. So you experienced a shift from higher frequency or vibration into the lower frequency and vibration. What came through is that beings from the realms have incarnated at this time in the physical plane to help in Gaia's ascension from this side, from the physical side versus that non-physical realm side. Much like how galactic beings have incarnated as star seeds at this time, some of Gaia's realm beings have also incarnated onto the physical plane to help in the ascension and to play their part. You may call these incarnated Gaia realm beings as sanctuary souls. I asked, why are they called sanctuary souls? And what came through is, because the sanctuary of the realms are always with them. And then I had a vision and this intense feeling of dusk and dawn and this memory and feeling of um, basically ever since I was a child, I had this very, very strong feeling that would overcome and overtake me during dusk or during this, not sunset, but like dusk time, right, kind of right after the sun set and you, there had this like, always, I always felt this sort of like very powerful energy and magic in the air. It's my favorite time of day, um, but they kind of brought me back to this one moment that I was especially feeling it really strongly. I must have been like 10 or 11 years old. And also, uh, synchronistically, as I bring this information forward and as I was typing this information, it was also dust time uh, just after sunset. And what came through was, yes, these are times in your physical earth plane, sight and awareness where you feel most connected to the realms. This is when an energetic portal opens up and merges the energy of the physical and non-physical realms or the non-physical closest four realms of Gaia. This is when this energy of magic seeps onto the planet, not magic of your physical world, but magic from the non-physical realms of Gaia. I asked, does the energy of the physical earth plane also seep into the realms at these times as well? If the energy of the realms are seeping onto our physical earth plane, plane, then it has to kind of be vice versa and go the other way as well. And what came through was, yes, energy and knowledge of the physical earth plane open more and more in the non-physical realms during these times of dusk and dawn. This sped up the lowering of vibration in the physical and non-physical realms following the fall of Atlantis and Lemuria. This is also what speeds up the ascension in the raising of your vibration as a collective in both the physical and non-physical realms. In bringing forward knowledge of the realms, meaning the first four realms of Gaia at this time, you bring forward knowledge of alchemy, magic, 
and mysticism beyond your physical awareness. Waves of intense energy from the realms are opening onto your physical planet right now. It brings forward energy of magic and knowledge of sanctuary soul lifetimes in the realms of Gaia. Basically saying that the sanctuary souls, the souls who have incarnated onto this planet um, from these energetic realms of Gaia or who have had maybe past lives in the energetic realms or who are very connected to the energetic realms, especially Avalon, um, these souls are basically um, activating or remembering uh, through the opening of this energy of the realms onto the planet right now. What came through is that Atlanteans who opened up into Avalon and the realm of Gaia at that time will also be affected by this strong wave of energy because many of them ended up staying there and measuring good faith with the people of Avalon. So the Atlanteans... Um, who opened up into Avalon and the realm of Gaia that Avalon exists within will also begin retrieving all of that information, knowledge, memory of not only that the Atlantean information and knowledge that they have, but also the information of opening up into this realm and Avalon and all of that magical energy that they um moved into after the fall of Atlantis. What came through is that cellular memory of those who hold knowledge and lifetimes past in Avalon and the realms of Gaia will begin activating and coming online with this strong wave of realm energy opening onto your physical planet. I asked, when is this energy coming? And what came through is that the energy is opening right now. The 4-4 portal opened divine feminine energy onto the planet. And with divine feminine energy also flows the energy of the realms of Gaia. Divine feminine energy holds open the doors for the energy of the realms of Gaia to flow through. I asked, how long will this energy be open as a wave on this physical planet? And what came through is that energy of this wave will be strongest throughout your summer, when dusk and dawn will be the strongest. This also coincides with the strong wave of divine feminine energy on your planet during this same time frame. I asked, what does this wave of energy do besides activate cellular memory and knowledge for those who are connected to the realms? And what came through is... The wave of strong energy of the realms of Gaia onto your planet opens magic into your collective consciousness. Remember when Harry Potter became a worldwide phenomenon? That was during an earlier wave of opening magic onto your planet. The ascension energy has been opening on your planet for many years, and during the time of Harry Potter was just a slight opening of magic onto the planet via the energetic realms of Gaia. They were sort of testing the water, if you will, mixing in a small amount of magic into your collective consciousness to help the planet acclimate to the stronger energy of magic that was to come. And then I had a vision of how you need to add only a very small amount of new dog food to a dog's existing food slowly over a period of time for him or her to acclimate to the new food. Otherwise, it might not agree with the dog's stomach or digestion. Um, so they kind of showed that to me. And what came through was yes, adding too much at once may have opened undesirable results. But now is the time for more to be added. So this wave of energy from the realms of Gaia, this magic or this wave of magical energy or energy of magic from the realms of Gaia paired with the energy from the divine feminine will be much stronger and open a flow of magic into your collective consciousness. I asked, what do you mean by a flow of magic? And what came through is that 
the energy of magic is opening in your collective consciousness. Remember when your collective was scared of magic and witches, and then I had a vision of the Salem witch trials, and what came through was, well, this will be the exact opposite. A new acceptance of magic as reality will open steadily within many people in the greater collective, meaning outside of the light workers, outside of people who kind of are already open to this. What came through is more and more people will accept alternative forms of healing or opening energetically in other ways that are not uh, sort of seen as woo-woo stuff, but as actual so-called magic and non-physical energy open in the physical. I asked, but aren't we already seeing a steady increase in all of this? And what came through was yes, you are already seeing a steady increase in those believing in the non-physical, spiritual aspects. But when it comes to magic, your collective still needs more convincing. Magic and energy of talking to spirits, if you will, are still not widely accepted in your collective. But these things will begin to open up more and more. I asked, will this opening up to magic and um, other aspects happen during this summer stage, during this summer time? And what came through was yes and no. The shift of accepting this higher consciousness of opening to magic and other non-physical energy will happen for those who are already on the fence, meaning in terms of this summer or in the next very near future. What came through is that it will be the strong wave of energy to push them over towards full belief. But for others in the collective, what you would call matrix, this time of summer is about integrating the higher vibrational energy of magic, as well as divine feminine, into the collective consciousness. When this happens, the process of ascension continues, and the next stages are about trickling this energy from the collective consciousness um, that's being integrated at this time and over the summer, and it's about trickling this energy from that collective consciousness into the minds and bodies of the collective so that people can begin opening their cellular memory of knowledge of magic, non-physical realms and energy, and divine feminine. This energetic wave sets the dominoes up to fall when the time is right. So right now, this month, the 4-4 four, four portal and the, and the upcoming months of summer is basically about integrating all of this energy into the collective consciousness so that it sets those dominoes up for the next stage, which is about the trickling of that energy into the actual physical bodies and minds of the collective so that those the cellular memory can be activated and the moving parts within the physical body can be activated um, and the inner lost knowledge restored, remembered, integrated in the physical body, conscious awareness, conscious mind. I asked, will we notice anything this summer directly connected to this wave of energy? And what came through was westward movement of energy, meaning strong energy in the west, specifically North America, South America, and Europe. Stronger energy, meaning more movement in weather patterns and open energy in your organizations, such as politics, education, healthcare, and finance. Weather will be less predictable and more spotty. Stronger weather in some parts and not as hot and fiery in some other parts. Weather opens strong divine feminine on the planet and much like in the Wizard of Oz, the weather opened one realm into another realm. We are not saying that there is going to be a Wizard of Oz scenario anywhere, but we are offering a better way to understand how the energy of the realms can open onto the planet through your weather. And then next, what came through was about the organizations, and what came through was opening the energy of the realms onto the physical planet opens safety measures within these greater organizations on your planet. 
This is because these organizations will be made up of people who will be affected by the wave of energy and in time open the cellular memory from the realms and divine feminine that will help to shift organizational structure. I asked, how do the organizational structures shift? And what came through was, the opened cellular memory of the magical realms and energy of divine feminine in people will shift the greater organizational structures from being centered around selfishness, power, and greed to structures being centered around balance, integrity, and the greater good. So this again is about when those domino pieces fall, when the energy integrated into the collective consciousness begins filtering into the actual physical bodies and minds of people, shifting on a cellular level, bringing forward inner lost knowledge, opening cellular memory. Again, it's about the dominoes falling. And right now, like we're in just the beginning stages of getting all of the domino pieces up and ready to fall. What came through is this greater shift in your physical structures and awareness will not be an overnight thing, but the shift in the energetic structures of your body and the shifts in the cellular memory and DNA are taking place right now. This has to happen first for the people to make the physical changes on your planet. Those who have lost cellular memory and DNA of the realms and divine feminine will soon remember, and the unfolding of a tangible see it, touch it, taste it, hear it, have it, smell it, physical 5D New Earth reality is just beginning to take shape. The domino pieces are not falling, but they are about to fall. Up until this point was the placement of the domino pieces, getting everything into place, and even doing test runs. I asked, what is the difference between the knowledge from a sanctuary soul versus a starseed? And what came through is that starseeds bring forth knowledge of higher dimensional galactic experiences and lifetimes, um, other planetary knowledge, and the sanctuary souls bring forth knowledge from the realms, knowledge of higher vibrational living on earth, not as physical, but as non-physical. It is much like how a person needs to shift their vibration and energy first before the physical manifestations of a more balanced physical body can be manifested. For a long time now, the process of Gaia has been about that clearing, cleansing, and releasing process. This process is still going on, but now is an opening for the next process or the next stage to begin at the same time. This next process is the opening of the energetic bodies of Gaia, a strengthening and amplifying of energy so that the physical changes can begin to manifest. And then what came through and the last thing to come through was that the pole shift is soon forecasted for changing over the clearing, cleansing, and releasing energetic process into the strengthening and amplifying energetic process for Gaia. And what I had was a feeling of them meaning that a a sort of completion of the pull shift signifies the changeover of energy processes from what we are saying about how we've been in this clearing, cleansing, and releasing process um, energetically for Gaia for a long time now, and we're moving over into a strengthening and amplifying energetic process. And a lot of that has to do with, in terms of physical manifestations, the whole pole shift. I can't speak in terms of of timeline because timelines often shift. Um, but the thing that they want you to know is this time, this summertime, this 4-4 portal this month, what we've been talking about in this video, it's important in terms of knowing that this is kind of like the end of setting up the dominoes and now it's kind of like after this this sort of process of integrating um the energetic realms of gaia the divine feminine into the collective consciousness and that energy seeping into um 
kind of trickling or filtering into the physical bodies, shifting cellular memory, DNA, bringing forward inner lost knowledge. All of that is the final setup, basically, into then being able to begin the fall of the dominoes. Um, so this time, this summer time, this the next the next few months is a very important time in terms of integrating higher vibrational energy into the collective consciousness. And I think this is kind of the main reason why they want to bring forward this information for these videos, this video series, The Four Realms of Gaia and Opening to Magic, so that those of you who hold this knowledge and information, it's like the bringing forward these videos will help you, will help in terms of unlocking that information further within you as you integrate with the energies coming to the planet at the same time. And that's what needed to come through in this video. I'm excited to see what comes through in the next video of this series um, as we dive further into Avalon, into the four realms of Gaia, and how it is affecting or opening up onto our physical Earth planet and experience, how we're kind of coexisting together and bringing forward this energy of magic and energetic alchemy and the sanctuary souls. Thank you so much for watching this video. In oneness we are Abe, oneness and love be with you.